Hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. For the next hour, we're going to be learning some basic vocabulary to talk about love and romance. Furthermore, we'll be looking at this vocabulary in terms of chunking how do we use it in phrases and sentences commonly. We're going to be learning this vocabulary by doing exercises, fill in the blank, mix and match um, exercises, and a, a little discussion, some conversation, and uh, hopefully you may learn a little bit about how uh, a little bit of vocabulary for love, the love boat. <laughs> okay, uh, Abimelech, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How about yourself? I'm okay. Uh, Abimelech, I have a tough question for you. Abimelech, <laughs> uh, have you ever been in love? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah! Oh, terrific. Well, great. Uh, okay. So, um, what is love? No, let's not go there. That's a little <laughs> deep and philosophical. Let's keep it basic. This is a basic vocabulary class. Uh, yeah. oh. um, was friendship. <laughs> Whoa. Some weird alien sounds coming over the... Uh, <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Uh, Daniela? Daniela, are you there? Daniela, have you been captured by aliens? There's some very odd, strange sounds coming over your uh, broadcasting from your uh, from your avatar. Daniela, are you there? I, okay, now I just hear hiss, static. By the way, that sound. That's called static or white noise. Danielle, I'm not sure what's going on there, but until you can figure it out, uh, if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone, there's a kind of a static hiss. Okay, uh, hopefully you can get that figured out. I, 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 I need to mute you. It's a little bit disturbing. Sorry about that. Try to figure that out. No, now I can't mute you for some reason. Okay. Danielle, if you could try to fix that for us, it would be great as it's quite a disturbing sound. Hmm. Okay. I'm unable to mute you. Oh. Daniela, help, please. Okay, uh, let's take a look. We're gonna, I'm going to do a screen share, and we're going to start some, with some very basic vocabulary. Uh, okay, let me... Uh, okay, Daniela, I can only hear... Loud static from you. Daniela, hello? Okay. Well, uh, hello. All right. Hello, Miner. How are you? Whoopsie. What's that? Whoopsie. Uh, Miner, are you there? Uh, sorry, sorry, I can I I can hear you before. Okay, all right, I can hear you loud and clear now. Uh, hello, welcome to the class. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's get started here. Let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna do a little fill in the blank, complete the text with the words and phrases below. Some very basic vocabulary. We're talking about love and romance. Uh, we've got a little story here, okay? 
So I'm going to have to scroll up to show you the words if you can't remember. But uh, uh, Abimelech, can you start our little story? Starting from here. Okay. Uh, Peter had never had a girlfriend. Most likely, yes. Let's hope so. Peter had never had a girlfriend. Okay. Very good. Uh, has a romantic interest. It's a girlfriend. Very good. Minor. Anna had never had a boyfriend. Well, that's very simple. All right. There you go. Uh, Abimelech, back to you. Uh, when they started, uh, when they started going out together. Very good. All right. When a couple uh, go out together, they're dating, they're seeing each other in a romantic way. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then the, the end of the sentence, when they started going out together, they were both very nervous. Uh, okay. Clear enough. All right, minor. Next sentence. For their first date, Peter wanted to take her somewhere. Mm hmm. It's a comma. Continue. Somewhere. I can see the other. Oh, oh I'm sorry. And. <laughs> um, can you down again, please? Uh huh. Somewhere. Can you up? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, romantic. Yes, it has to be an adjective. All right. Uh, for sure. Okay. All right. So he booked a table in an Italian restaurant. I don't know why French restaurants and Italian restaurants are thought to be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently they are. Uh, it's minor. better to go to, to eat uh, junk food. Is it? Really? <laughs> You're cheap. I think so. Minor, do you remember your first date? Uh, I don't remember, but uh, I uh -huh. think that it was so for it was it was awful. Yeah, I think that's yeah, normal. Yeah. yeah, sure. So you don't know what what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Abimelech. Yeah. How about you? Do you remember your first date? No. Uh, no, I don't remember. Actually, uh, actually, we 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 were uh, close. Friends, that's why uh, everything is normal, <laughs> so I don't think that. Right. Yeah, I think, um, okay, either you sort of ease into a date, and so you don't really remember, or you have your first date, and it's a disaster, uh, and you try your very hardest to forget, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, okay, let me quickly say hello to uh, Fanek. Fanek? Hello, Fanek. Fanic, uh, hello. How are you? Can you can you say hello? Um, is your is your audio uh, is your microphone working? All right, uh, Fanic, you may need to scroll to the top of the page with your mouse and look for the settings, the little wheel, the gear. Make sure that you're when you click it, the drop down, make sure your microphone and head and uh, speakers are the correct ones. If not, you may have to leave the class and re enter. Sometimes that works. There is uh, is there, please. She looks frozen, so probably she's going to need to go out and come back. Okay, uh, Abimelech, he walked her home and then. Uh, when he left, uh, they 
Messi da qui. Yeah. Uh, they kissed. <laughs> they kissed. They kissed good night. On the first date. Way to go, Peter. All right. Good job. I'm proud of Peter. That's great. So he got a kiss on the first date. That's a good sign. <laughs> as far as I, my experience, that's a very good sign. Uh, okay. Uh, minor, okay. Next day, Anna told her best friend that she was falling in love with Peter. Oh. Okay. Uh, she was in love. Okay, now Minor, <laughs> very good. Minor said she was falling in love, uh, right? Which perfectly fits, actually. She could be in love. That's great. Or she could be, she was falling in love with the with the verb to be, past tense, and uh, the ing form, the present participle. Yeah, uh, a um, past continuous tense would fit perfectly. So I actually like your answer more than I like the, the uh, possible answer. Okay, good one. Uh, and that this was the first really serious something in her life. Hmm. Okay, I'll just do this one for us. First serious relationship. All right, she's in her, her first relationship. Okay, let me uh, welcome. Oh, oh. Uh, what was your name again? Um. Uh, oh. Hi. Uh, my it's name is Dimijan. Demijan, sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't bring it back. I'll try my best to remember next time. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, welcome to the class, Demijan. Demijan, let me ask you a question. Uh, in Kazakhstan, I remember where you're from. In Kazakhstan, when do boys and girls begin dating? When? Yeah, how old? I mean. Uh, it's maybe sometimes like mostly in traditionally in last century. We start at certain maybe fourteen, fifteen years. Maybe. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. But, okay. Yeah, guys. So, uh, just now maybe. Then just now all, just now like Western life, urban life, this starts maybe 22, maybe 23. Aye, 22, in the, 23. In the cities, uh, in the village it's 19, 20, 18, like that. Okay. American culture, it's more like the first thing you said, more like 13, 14, 15. Your parents drive you to the movies, pick you up after, and embarrass you. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, so actually, in all countries, maybe that's... Okay, all right. All right. Uh, Okay, now here's something that's worth noting. If a girl, a girl has a boyfriend, a boy has a girlfriend, that means they're romantically involved. Girls often refer to their female friends as girlfriends, all right? But boys do not do this. Boys don't call their guy friends boyfriends. That would sound very odd, uh, okay? So it's okay for girls to call their, their just boyfriends their pals, their buddies, girlfriends, but guys, it sounds very, very strange. So please, so don't do that because you will be misinterpreted. <laughs> uh, guys have buddies or pals, not not boyfriends. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, 
All right, uh, Demijohn, we're going to do a little mix and match exercise now. Match the beginning and the ending. Note that one of the endings gets used twice. Okay, how are these um, phrases used together with uh, prepositions? In other words, is what we're trying to trying to learn here. Uh, Demijohn, she fancies. Okay. You. Very good. She fancies you. I mean, she likes you a lot. She's romantically attracted to you. Uh, well, there's a good word. Uh, attracted, attraction, attractive. This word is uh, used a lot in in English to talk about in a romantic linking or somebody who's interested in you in a romantic way. Uh, she fancies you. Uh, you can say I fancy chocolate ice cream too. By the way, I mean that's perfectly normal. I like chocolate ice cream. Uh, let, let me say hello to Fanic. Hello. Hello. Okay. Now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, all right, Fanic. Am I saying your name correctly? How should I say your name? Excuse me, I lost the voice. Um, maybe the, the. Okay, I was just wondering how should I pronounce your name? Oh, uh, Fanic. Fanic. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Yes, correctly. Where are you from, Fanic? Uh, I'm from Beijing, China. Okay, Beijing. Cool. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, Fanic. We're doing a little mix and match to see how. These phrases are formed to talk about love and romance. Uh, oh, uh, I have downloaded the material. Okay, terrific. All right, so if you could try number two here. What does number two match with over here? Match. Could you go ahead and read it for us? Oh, uh, yeah. She, she's not really interested uh, in him. In him, very good. Uh, interested in something. Now this, um, what we're looking at really is how different verbs co-locate with different prepositions. All right. This is very calm. One thing you you have to learn. It's a little bit more advanced, but you have to learn how different verbs usually only use two or three different prepositions and you can for example you cannot say not just talking about romance but you can't be interested with something um, interested about that's a, a common mistake but it's not right you're interested in something that's the normal collocation between the verb and the preposition uh, Okay. Let, oh, uh, it appears Julio has joined us. Hello, Julio. Hello, teacher. How's Long. it going? It's going pretty well. Thanks. Long time no see. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. All right, I'm going to throw you right in. I'm going to throw you to the wolves. Uh, we're doing a little mix and match. Which. Uh, which uh, ending does this beginning phrase co-locate with? Number three here. She's absolutely crazy about him. All right. You're crazy about someone. Okay. Means that you're stupid in love. Have you, Julio, have you ever been stupid in love? <laughs> yeah, a couple of times, but I hear I'm you. never doing that again. Never. <laughs> okay, you've sworn it off. Mm hmm <laughs> Okay. I hear you. Uh, okay. Very good. Thank you, Julio. You're, all right. Crazy about someone is a very common phrasing. Uh, all right. I'm going back to Abimelech. Okay. Number four. I don't know what she sees in him. Okay. Very good. Very common phrase. 
Uh, I don't know what she sees in him. Uh, obviously, you're not talking about seeing sight with your eyes. You're talking about what what she what she sees in him emotionally, or um, you're at, really, why does she like him? <laughs> is the question. Uh, okay. Uh, Minor, how about number five? She's always flirting with him. Right. Uh, Minor, are you a flirt? Okay, this has a... This has a, a I noun can do form. It. I think that I can do it. I can do it! <laughs> uh, I'm so bad for to do it. I can, you can do it, but do you like to do it? I think that's the difference between being a flirt and not being a flirt. If you enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe when I flirt with somebody, um, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I laugh. Um, uh -huh. I feel stupid when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, I'm a I'm a flirt for sure. A flirt is somebody who, um, not seriously, but compliments girls or s intimates that suggests that they might like to have a relationship in a romantic way. Uh, well, a guy with a girl, or it goes the other way. I, girls certainly flirt with guys all the time. Uh, uh, and okay, they suggest that they may want a romantic relationship. Whether they really do or not, it may just be playful. Maybe it, there are real intentions, but perhaps not. Uh, okay, we're going to try using these phrases complete uh, in the expressions in the following sentences in a more practical way in a sentence. So, uh, Demijan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, number six, if you could read that for us, please. Julia seems to really like Jan, but personally... Uh... It, it may help to read the second part, too. What expressions? She's absolutely crazy. Maybe I don't. Uh, well, look at the next sentence. That's a clue as well. He, he must, must be, be a... at least ten years old than her. Okay, but now look, uh, Demijan. Here's was another. Uh, always flirting. Sorry. Always flirting. Uh, I don't think so. Now, here, let me, let me show you something. Julie seems to really like Ian. Okay, we know that. But personally, okay, the key is here, but. So you use this especially together with but personally. It means you're going to say something contrasting. Um, okay. Uh, uh, everyone at my job likes my boss, but personally, I think he's an idiot, okay? Notice that contrasting statement, all right? Uh, okay, contrast, showing the difference, all right? Oh, okay. So what do you think? Does that have... Uh, <laughs> good one, Julio. Um, Absolutely crazy. Okay. So what do you think? But personally, uh, uh, he personally about, about absolutely crazy about him. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, can somebody help us out here? What what would be a contrasting statement? Something opposite to she likes him. Uh, maybe I don't know what uh, she sees in him. Indeed. But personally, I don't know what she sees in him. Okay? I don't know why she likes him. 
I don't understand why she likes him. I don't know what she sees in him. It was a very common statement. Or I don't know what he sees in her. It has nothing to do with gender. It could be either way. Okay, he must be at least 10 years older than her. Uh, all right, they, they probably suggested they probably have nothing in common. Something like that. Uh, holy smokes. Uh, Fanic, you've got some curious feedback going on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have some, some problem. Okay. Um, no big deal, but if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone when you're not talking, and then we, we, don't, we won't all hear it. Okay. And then I'll, I'll call your name and I'll talk to you. Uh, okay. Uh, Julio, how about number seven here? Uh, John isn't very happy at the moment. He really likes this girl at college, but but she. Let me check this phrases. She um doesn't fancy him at all. <laughs> well, yeah, that works. She doesn't fancy him at all, or she's not really interested in him at all, or here's another one. Uh, that's actually common, not here, but she won't. She won't give him the time of day. <laughs> yeah, another common phrase. She won't give him the time of day. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> so that's sort of a humorous phrase, which you could really take two ways. She won't tell him what time it was, or but she. She won't give him any time at all, any attention at all. That would also fit in perfectly here. Well, not with at all, but the same idea. Okay. She won't have, uh, or uh, maybe she won't have anything to do with him. Teacher, maybe it's just my appreciation, but I, have, I haven't really heard that expression in... American English. I have heard fancy at all when it comes to British English. Mm -hmm. So is that common for you guys to say uh, fancy? Fancy? No, not really. That's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, to say you fancy something or you like something or someone, it could be, again, something or someone, much more British. You may hear Americans use it, but it, it would be much more rare. Uh, Actually, a couple of the phrases that I've given, um, she's into him, uh, or rather than she fancies him in a positive way, maybe she's really into him, she's nuts about him, or she's crazy about him is very, very common for American speakers. In the positive yeah, British, point. British people use that expression a lot, like, do you fancy a cup of tea? Exactly. Uh, you fancy you like everything. Most people yeah. fancy everything. <laughs> fancy everything. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, that's absolutely a very good point. So, uh, yeah, Americans rarely use that expression. That word. That word as a verb. More often, we use that word as a as an adjective. It's a fancy dinner party, or she has a fancy dress means uh, elaborate and uh, expensive and nice quality whatever okay uh, moving on Abimelech back to you I think uh, it's Fanny's turn sorry oh Fanny uh, is it um, okay yeah alright uh, uh, number 8 uh, yeah, number eight. Go ahead. Daddy, good, bright, uh, red. Every time he talks to you, I'm sure she is, she is absolutely crazy um, about you. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be you, not him. <laughs> Very good. Good. Uh, good job. Changing pronoun. It would have to be you. I'm sure she's, sure 
she's absolutely crazy about you. That's a good answer. Okay. Or I'm sure she fancies you, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the best answer. Okay, she turns bright red. She, all right, she, she gets nervous and embarrassed. Okay, very good. Good job. Uh, okay. So, uh, yes, minor. Uh, can you tell me other way to say bright red? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, more. <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, some Americans might say beet red. Beet's a kind of vegetable. It's very red. Uh, okay. Let's see how else I could say she gets embarrassed every time she talks to you, but that doesn't quite capture it. If you're embarrassed, it's usually because you've done something embarrassing. You've done something and you feel stupid about it uh, and self-conscious. Obviously, she turns red because she feels very self-conscious, but um, she goes beet red, she goes bright red. Maybe uh, she blushes. She blushes. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> the obvious word. Silly me. Yeah, sure. She blushes. When somebody's face turns red, we say they, br they blush. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This is the when, obvious when, answer. When you make or become your cheeks uh, red. Yeah, something. that's right. Exactly right. That's that's it. You blush, okay, your face actually turns like a red color. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, now... Uh, sure. I have a question, sorry. Sure, no problem. I was looking that word up and uh, and I see a lot of dictionaries spelling it with a F. Which word? Uh, flushes. Ah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh, right. Um, flushes. <laughs> okay. It's possible. Well, they're two different words, not different spellings. They're two different words. To blush is to, when your face turns red, usually because you're shy or self-conscious. Uh, hmm. Uh, to if you flush her face flushed with red, it may be because she's very embarrassed. It may be because, well, uh, okay, everyone found out her deepest, darkest secret. It may be because she's very angry. Some people, when they become extremely angry, uh, their face turns red. So I, if somebody got angry, I would say her face flushed but I would not say her. she blushed, okay? Definitely not. Flushes is used more for, like, when somebody turns red because they're really angry and upset about something. Um, okay. blush, blush is then uh, in third person, blushes. And blush is uh, singular in, in first person, could it be? To blush, yeah. Uh, I blush... Uh, okay. She blushes. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. But uh, to keep in mind, also, Julio, flush has a totally different meaning as a verb in English. You go to the bathroom and hopefully <laughs> you flush the toilet. <laughs> when you make the water go down in the toilet, you are flushing the toilet. Uh, actually, you flush, you, uh, okay, you can flush birds. If you're hunting birds, you flush them out of the brush. You scare them or your dog scares them, whatever, so they fly up in the air and you can shoot them. So flush has a, a, quite a few different meanings. Blush is pretty much, pretty much what it is. It's just your face turns red, usually because of shyness or embarrassment. Flush is because, not because of shyness usually, but possibly embarrassment or anger. That's the difference. 
Okay. So blush to the bees definitely a safer word. Kind of, yeah. Flushed with her face, flushed with anger is a common phrase. So somebody, you know, somebody freaks out. They're obviously like shaking with anger, and their face turns really red, and they're almost crying. That's when we say her face flushed with anger. Mm. Okay, uh, great. That was interesting and educational. Thank you, everyone. Good questions, by the way. Uh, Abimelech, let's move on. Number nine. Okay. Uh, Tina spends almost every evening with this new guy. She is uh, seeing. Messy the text. Mm -hmm. uh, she is seeing always flirting. With well, him. well, mm, probably not, cause she. Because she's she's uh, with him every evening, so uh, so there's a there's a period here. So a new new phrase. She sees oh. him every evening, so we don't really need to flirt with. Uh, for example, I'm not going to bother flirting with my wife. <laughs> 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 kind of already, you know, that deal's already done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that boat has already sailed. So there's. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in me flirting with my wife, although I should. I know. It's not very romantic of me, but all right. We tend to not flirt with somebody we're already seeing. Uh, right. Uh, she's absolutely crazy, crazy about him. Right. It, again, interchangeable. Could be she's absolutely crazy about him or she fancies him. Uh, both of those mean pretty much the same thing. Absolutely crazy about him, maybe a little more strong, okay? But uh, basically, it means the same thing, right? That will work. Okay, and finally, number 10, uh, Minor. Minor, you try number 10. I'm sure Liz fancies that guy in the, in the accustoms department. She always flirting with him. Yeah, definitely. She's always flirting with him. So she's trying to initiate or start a relationship. She's trying to let him know that she's interested. Uh, okay. Okay. I gotta change things a little bit because nice picture, huh? <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, okay. Eating her face. Uh, he is sucking off her. They're sucking face. Okay. Well, there's a kind of disgusting, um, <laughs> a kind of a disgusting uh, idiom for you. They're sucking face, literally. But really, we say when a couple is kissing like. Very sloppy and passionately, they're sucking face. Okay. Uh, all right. Even though that may seem slightly disgusting. Uh, okay. If if you can see this, hopefully it's uh, it fits here. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, okay. We're gonna match the beginnings and the endings of the sentences together. Again, still about starting a relationship together. Uh, okay, Demijan, can you start us off with number one? Sarah is very happy at the moment. She is seeing. Uh, uh, she. Hmm. Oh, she's with Susie Jones, uh, singer. No. No, I think we've got our subject is seeing. We've got a continuous, uh, present continuous. That means it's happening now, or okay, over a stretch of time, possibly. Likely here. Ah, she's here for that. Uh, 
is in cure for death. I hope not. That would mean that she's, well, I mean, today's society, who knows. She's seeing her for a date would mean that there's two women dating each other. All right, well, okay, fine. Um, but probably because because we have present continuous, all right, that, that means, it either means something is happening right now, this second, or, for example, I'm reading Tom Sawyer right now. That Obviously not right this second. I'm teaching you class. But it means that I have been – I'm somewhere in the middle of the book. It's been going on. It's, uh, it will be going on in the future. So now in a broader sense. Okay. Probably, most likely, she's seeing some guy. She met on holiday, so our subject she is seeing, and then, and then the now she's seeing some guy. Um, now here she's seeing him means she's dating him. She's been going out on dates with him. They've been spending time together. Uh, all right, they're seeing each other My in a romantic dating. way. Yes, dating. Right. Uh, all right, they're romantically involved. Is another way. Okay, those uh, Bobby and Susie are romantically involved. They're seeing each other. Same meaning, exactly the same meaning. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Fennec, how about number two? Uh, yes, uh, number two. Have you heard about Mark? He was going out. With Susie Jones, the singer. Wow, singer. Susie Jones. Ooh. Singer, singer. Singer. Okay, that's better. All right. All right, going out with uh, also like dating or seeing someone. Um, just as you can, you're, if you're going out, continuous tense, you're, it means you've been <laughs> dating for a while, you're continuing to, to date them. If you go out on a date, that, that means one date, okay? So I also use the phrase, go out on the date. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Nader, hello. Welcome to the class. Hello. How are you hello. today? I'm doing okay. Thank you. We're talking about love and relationships, Nader, so... Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself mentally for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll come back to you in just a minute. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm a little confused where I am. Oh, uh, Abimelech. Okay. No, no, Julio, we don't say he's hearing her because, you know, men never listen to women anyway. <laughs> Only he's seeing her. Abimelech, number three. Uh, have you heard about Laura and Joe? They've started. Uh, uh, they've started a lot of each other. Mm, I don't think so. They've uh, started uh, going out together. Ah, very good. They have started going out together. Here we got a player. We got a. Pay attention to our verb tense in this, the verb tense uh, of these, this last part of the, the sentences here. Um, yeah, they have started here. You got a present perfect tense. They have started doing something together. Up until now, they're still doing it. Uh, they started going out together. They've begun dating together. They're still dating now is the meaning there. Uh, okay, uh, minor. Apparently, Phil and Liz have been seeing a lot of a lot of each other recently. Right. Okay, they have been seeing each other, or throw in a quantifier. Sure, they've been seeing a lot of each other. Okay. Uh, Okay, one thing about this free phrase, this this whole phrase actually, they've been seeing a lot of each other. 
Okay, they are seeing each other. If I simply say they are seeing each other, it means they are dating. That's it. Sometimes when they say, when we use this have been seeing a lot of each other recently, okay, with the extra words have been using, um, using, uh, okay, this whole phrase, it kind of, it kind of means we're not sure if they're dating or not. We suspect they're dating. Well, they've been seeing an awful lot of each other lately. Is something going on or what? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a slight intimation that we're not quite sure. Oh, they've been. I don't know. They've been seeing a lot of each other lately. Um, perhaps. Maybe it means the speaker isn't quite sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Demijohn, how about number five? <clears throat> Did Sally tell you about Mike? He asked. Sure for that? He asked her for a date. Yep. You ask somebody out on a date, or you ask them for a date is okay. We more commonly we say you ask somebody out on a date. Ask out. Um, it's about the date, maybe yes. Like. Sorry. Uh, um. Ask like about about date maybe for. Yeah. Think. Yeah, you asked her for a date. Would you okay? Um, would you go on a date with me? You can ask out. By the way, using "ask out" the phrasal verb, you can ask a, a someone out on a date. But sure, I can ask um, um, my neighbors. I can ask my neighbors out to the opera. Sure, why not? Uh, it just simply means to invite somebody for entertainment outside, but it is often used to talk about for a date. For those of you with a handout, please disregard this nonsense at the bottom. In American English, the, you say that you are dating somebody. I think I left this off the handout, as a matter of fact, because it's stupid. Um, you say that you're dating somebody instead of seeing or going out with them. That's nonsense. Uh, Americans say going out, seeing each other, dating. We use all of those quite commonly. So ignore that. Uh, okay. <laughs> in color. What? Uh, falling in love. Okay. What we have here. All right. What we're really looking at here is it serious. All right. We're going to be doing a little... A little reading <laughs> comprehension. Is the relation serious or is it not serious? Serious or not serious? Sounds like a game show. Okay. Let's try it out. Julio, reading the first sentence here. Uh, it started out as just a casual relationship, but one day I realized we have fallen in love. Dun, dun, dun. Is it ta -da, serious or not serious? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, it is serious. Yeah, it looks serious. He's in love. He's had it. He's over. I agree with you. All right. Uh, Did you say okay. he's had it? Yeah, I, I did. That slip of the tongue, Julio. <laughs> okay. Fanic. Fanic, number two. Would you read this one? Tina and Mike spend every minute together. They are obviously madly in love. Oh. Madly in love. Oh, my gosh. Serious <laughs> or not serious? Uh, not serious. Not serious? Really, Fanic? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. Well, uh, 
madly in love means they're crazy, foolish, insanely in love. They're they're crazy about each other. Um, they're going to get married and live happily ever after and have 42 children, 779 uh, grandchildren. Uh, oh, you mean the not serious or not serious is about about the love, not about the expression? Well, yeah, about the... About the oh, love, about yeah. their relationship, I guess. Okay, okay, it's, it's serious. All right, looks serious, serious to me. Okay, very good. Okay, I, I yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, uh, Nidair, number three. I met a guy when I was in Greece, but I knew it was just a holiday romance. I never saw him again after we got back. Mm, definitely not serious. Definitely not serious. All right, here we see... Uh, a term, a holiday romance. You also will hear a summer romance, uh, largely because British and American students have the summer holiday. So you you meet someone over the summer and you maybe you date a little, and then you go back to school and you you never see that person again. Yeah, mm -hmm. a summer romance, a holiday romance. These are not very serious. Right. Uh, okay. Hey, there. Have you ever had a summer romance? <laughs> a whirlwind summer romance. romance. Actually, people here maybe uh, because the students m can meet uh, after school. So I guess it's a winter romance here. <laughs> ah, winter romance. Okay. Here's here's another one that's related um, that you may commonly hear. A whirlwind romance. Ooh, that's common phrasing. A whirlwind romance is one that's very fast. They, they fall in love very quickly. You know, the kind of thing where the couple gets married after one month only. Um, they meet in Italy on vacation, and then they decide to suddenly go to, uh, go to India together, and the next thing you know, they're married two weeks later. That's a whirlwind romance, another common phrase. Uh, like actors, like <laughs> like actors. Actors seem prone to that sort of behavior. Yeah. Yes. True, true yeah, enough. One or two months, they are uh, they get divorced. Yeah. I who knows? I don't understand, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think true. I I totally understand that expression because women are like a whirlwind. They come strong. They put your world upside down. And at the end, they take your house, your car, everything. That you take. <laughs> You're not in Kansas anymore, Julio. <laughs> okay. Uh, funny. Uh, okay. Uh, Abimelech, we're back to you. How about number four? Okay. John's been with uh, Linda for ages. He absolutely, uh, he absolutely adores her. Uh -huh. what, does, what does adore mean? Ah, okay. Well, that's the key word in the sentence. To adore is actually to love, but also closer to worship. <laughs> okay. He worships her. Okay, that reminds me of another idiom. He, I could say he puts her on a pedestal. If I could just spell pedestal. <laughs> That's a hard word for me to spell. Okay, hang on a second. A pedestal is like a, a stand, something that you put, for example, a sculpture or a statue. Uh, usually you see a statue. It's on some kind of uh, raised platform. That's a pedestal. A pedestal is more like a table platform, but if you, if you put someone on a pedestal, you worship them, you adore them. Okay. Uh, all right. So then, uh, it's uh, serious. No, oh, it's quite serious. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's got it bad. Okay. Uh, there's a an expression for you. Okay, that's a good one. He's got it bad. Okay. Uh, I could use this expression. He or she. They've got it bad. It seems to make no sense. Really, but what it refers to is is this. He's 
he's crazy, foolishly in love, adores her, and uh, uh, <laughs> and he he's insanely in love with her, obsessed, whatever. He's got it bad. I, I could say this not just about love. He's got it bad for Linda. Um, okay, if somebody's obsessed with something else, I could also say he's got it bad. Uh, he loves racing cars. It's all he wants to do. It's all he thinks about day and night. Stays up all night working on his car. He's got it bad. All right, obsessed, basically. Uh, all right. Uh, Minor, how about number five here? I haven't had a girlfriend for a while now. I had a brief relationship with someone a few months ago, but but it didn't really work out. Yeah. It's not serious. Not serious at all. Very much not serious. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, he's got nothing really going on. All right. And... Wim Wham, Nader, what, what is that? <laughs> Wim Wham, I like it. I like it, but I don't quite understand it. I don't know that one. What is Wim Wham? Uh, trifle, oh, okay. A trifling thing, all right, not, not important. Oh, oh, okay. Might be more British. I don't really know that one. Uh, okay. Uh, Demijohn, we've got uh, the end of a relationship. All right, the tragic finish with fighting split up. Uh, we've only got a minute or two. Um, Demijohn, do you think I should invite Jeff and Sue to the party? <clears throat> Never stop Do you think I should invite Jeff and Sue to the party? Ah, yeah. Do you think I should invite Jeff and Sue to the party? Haven't you heard? They have finally decided to... had a huge role? Uh, mm, no. Uh, we're going to have a, after two here, we're going to... This is uh, introducing an infinitive. An infinitive to verb. Split up. Yeah, they finally decided to split up. So a couple calls it quits. <laughs> Which is another way to say it. Calls it quits or splits up. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Then uh, then it's it's all over but the crying, as we say. Okay, one one more. I unfortunately we're out of time. Uh, Fanic. Yes. Um, Try this you? one. Mm. Didn't you know I'm not seeing James anymore? Uh, I I finished with him last week. Great. It was fine while it lasted. But I think we both knew we had a huge row each other. Uh, well, no, you have a huge row. A row is a huge fight. We both knew we weren't right for each other. This is a faith-saving way to say to not place blame for a split up, or by the way, often a breakup. Okay, when people uh, who are romantically involved no longer want to see each other, they have a split up, they split up, or they have a breakup. A breakup can be used as a noun. Um, so saying, well, we, weren't, we just weren't right for each other, or uh, the other famous one, we grew apart. This is kind of a face-saving way to say we broke up. But it's really nobody's fault. It's not my fault. It's not his fault. Okay, so we don't have to place blame. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. I gotta go. Got another class coming up right here on Verbling. So thank you, everyone.
Hope you learned a little something about love. <laughs> At least vocabulary. Maybe you learned nothing about love, but a little vocabulary, I hope. Thanks a lot, everyone. We'll see you next time here on Verboing. Bye-bye.